And I want to lead that into this kingdom moments, this third pillar of what we're really trying to explore and share with this world is through these kingdom moments. And this comes out of the divine appointment and divine opportunity work that I've been studying and writing about and, and getting just so blessed to step in. But the reality of what's the problem we're tackling? Well, the problem is that this world is, we're surrounded every day by people that are confused, hopeless, depressed, deceived, and lost sons and daughters. And yet we walk right by them each and every day. And they are desperate and, and praying for somebody to come and, and that we can be an answer to their prayers. That God entrusted us. That when Jesus left, said, I'm sending the Holy Spirit and I'm going to send you out in the Great Commission. That you would go out and make disciples. And that's our job that he left us in charge of, of being sent out. And the reality is, is that when I studied the divine appointments and missed opportunities, times where people felt prompted but didn't follow through, it was this harsh reality is that I always viewed that as between me and God. That, oh man, I wimped out again, I blew it, and now I feel bad with my relationship with God. And God said, no, 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 your disobedience is not a neutral act. Other people's lives are impacted when you withhold Christ from them. These missed opportunities are not just something you feel bad about, but some, God was going to do something there and wanted you to be a part of it. Kathy Lee Gifford, the, the uh, kind of TV personality who was on NBC and other shows, and she was a, a TV host, is that she was asked in an interview, and I was watching this interview, and they asked her, why do you always bring up Jesus so much? Why do you always got to bring everything back to Jesus? And she said something powerful that I'll never forget. She said, what if I had the cure for cancer? How cruel would it be for me to withhold that from people? She said, well, I believe that I have the cure for cancer of the soul, and his name is Jesus. So how cruel would it be for me to withhold that from people? And it was this reality that just hit me. Like, wow, at the end of the day, when I'm not trying to make myself feel better about myself, I need to actually sit with that in prayer, that I am withholding the cure for cancer of the soul from people when I keep my mouth shut when I wimp out, when I don't have the courage to step out in faith. And that's the reality that's got to pierce my heart and change how I live each and every day. Because we have a limited view of, of what evangelism is. And we, again, have been deceived by the enemy over evangelism. Be like, oh, I don't do evangelism. I'm like, oh, no, no, you do evangelism all the time. Evangelism is simply sharing something that you're excited and passionate about with persuasive intent. When was the last time you tried to talk your friend into watching that Netflix series? When was the last time you tried getting everybody to watch that YouTube video? When was the last time that you tried to get people to vote for that particular political policy? You evangelize for things all the time. You have a whole plan to be able to save people through policies and politicians, and rather than advocating for the cure for cancer of the soul, which is Jesus. And so we've got to realize we evangelize all the time about all sorts of ridiculous things. I mean, I evangelized for pizookies. <laughs> like nobody else. If you've ever been to BJ's, I, like when I moved out here, I had my first pizookie. Like I was the world's biggest pizookie evangelist. It's like, let's go right now. There's one 15 minutes from here. I'll call ahead. We'll have two. So we evangelize for things all the time and we miss out on doing it for the one thing that will truly change people's lives. And that's why I believe these kingdom moments, these divine opportunities, it's evangelism broke down into manageable parts. Because the reality is when things seem too complex, what do you need to do? You need to break them down into smaller, more manageable parts. And kingdom moments are a way to do that. In these little moments, one by one, that it's evangelizing in these unique testimonies, these unique ways of what God wants to do. Maybe it's just planting a seed. Maybe it's doing a little bit of watering. Maybe it's actually getting to lead somebody to the Lord. But it happens in so many different varieties and so many different little ways that it can be so ridiculously encouraging. And that's the part of this is getting people to be able to step out and take a little bit more of a risk than they would have and see a little bit of a reward. And then they're confident to take a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. I was just speaking in a church last weekend, two weekends in a row on this very topic. And this woman comes back to me for the second Sunday and says, you know, because of your, your, your talk last Sunday, I was at the ER with my daughter and we were there for hours. And I saw this man who kind of had tattoos and all this stuff, but he was also just bleeding. And he had so much going on. He'd been in a car accident. He was there for hours, even longer than us. And she said, you know, I finally worked up the courage, you know, to talk with him. And, and, and eventually I asked him if I could pray for him. 
And she said, and he said yes, and he was open to it. And she said, I, you know, I, I didn't quite have the courage to pray for him out loud over him right there, but I just prayed in my heart and I prayed silently. And that was a huge win for her. And that's a win for us, that's a win for the kingdom. Because guess what, next time, she's now got a little bit more courage and a little bit more boldness to go a little bit further. And then she'll go a little bit further and a little bit further. And that's the beauty of seeing people walk these things out, but be encouraged, be equipped, and be sent out. And that's, that's the beauty of it. Because here's the, the, the pain point that I've become to realize is that when we die and we stand before Jesus Christ and see him in all his glory, Sometimes people get worried about the bigger sins that they think that they have that God's going to call out. And how do I stand before Jesus knowing that I've done this big thing or whatever it is? But guess what? I don't think Jesus is going to have to mention the big things. I think when we see Jesus in all his glory, all he's going to do is look at us. And he's going to read off a few numbers. And he's going to read off the number of hours that we spent scrolling mindlessly on social media. He's going to read off the, the amount of hours that you spent watching mind-numbing YouTube videos and cat videos. And he's going to read off the, the number of hours you spent playing video games. And he's going to read off just these basic mundane, but when you compare those hours and those numbers to the glory of Jesus Christ, he doesn't even have to go to those bigger things that you think he's going to bring up. Because that's going to be so crushing in that moment because you're going to realize when we see him in all his glory, everything that was possible had we had the courage to step out in faith and to be able to move in the power of God. And here's the beauty of it is that one of the quotes that I came across in this work was from a philosopher, Martin Buber. And it was so encouraging me, to me because he said, it's not about gifted or ungifted. It simply comes down to those that give themselves versus those who withhold themselves. Because in my mind, it was all about the gifted. I had this father-in-law that was crazy gifted and anointed and charismatic, and he had all these beautiful, amazing, incredible divine appointment stories. And, and I made it about gifting. I don't have that gifting. I'm too shy. I'm too introverted. And another pastor I heard said, are you, are you introverted or do you have Christ in you? Pick one. And so it laid it down that it's not about gifting. All it really is, is that the people that will have these kingdom moments, these divine appointments, are those that choose to give themselves instead of withhold themselves from that very moment, from that very person. Because you never know whose life is going to be transformed, whose life is going to be changed. And the, that's the excitement and adventure that we get to wake up every single day. Tomorrow you get to wake up in the morning and you get to say, today somebody's life could be changed and transformed for Jesus Christ. And now it's just a, an adventure of seeing who that person might be today. Even if it happens in just a little bit of moment and you get to plant a seed. Because the reality is that there's a principle that those that, that, that sow sparingly reap sparingly. Those that sow generously reap generously. The people that have the most kingdom moments are those that sow the most seeds. And that's the only difference. They're giving out the seed, and they're watering those, and being a part of the process. Because there's a quote from Susan Scott who said, while not every single conversation is guaranteed to change the trajectory of a life, a relationship, or a marriage, any single conversation can. And that's the power, that's the mystery, that's the beauty of this whole thing. Because we get to play, we get to partner, we're co-heirs with Christ. And we get to walk this thing out in power and in love and do this thing to the, to the best of our ability. And that's what we're excited to do through those kingdom moments is to equip the body of Christ, to equip the saints and send them out. To remind them that you are a saint. You're not just a sinner. Part of the mindset is, is that if you think that you're just a sinner who is occasionally a saint, what are you going to do most of? Mostly sinning and, and very little saint stuff. But if you think I'm a saint who occasionally sins, now I'm doing mostly saint stuff but I occasionally sin, and that's the grace of, of Jesus Christ that covers those moments.